Welcome to this week's topic on food choices and human health. I'd like to start with a discussion. What is healthy? Let's take a look at these common breakfast items. The first one is an Egg McMuffin with sausage. The second, the Starbucks Venti Mocha Frappuccino and a brand muffin. The third, brand flakes with milk and a half a cup of berries. Now the berries and milk aren't shown here. A large donut and then a bagel and cream cheese. Again, the cream cheese isn't really shown here. I like to break down each of these into some of their nutrients. This is just a small number of nutrients that are going to be found in these items. And we'll learn about which ones we want to emphasize and which ones we want to minimize. Our text will talk about minimizing saturated fat, but we'll learn a little bit beyond that about what types of saturated fat might be healthy for us and what types we need to avoid. We definitely want to minimize sugar, particularly added sugar, and increase our consumption of fiber. I think the first one that jumps out here, first breakfast item to everybody is the mocha and muffin. This is over a thousand calories. Now if the average person takes in about or needs about 2,000 calories a day, you're getting half of your calories from breakfast with most of these calories coming from sugar and an enormous amount of calories from overall from fat and no fiber. And we'll talk about the importance of having fiber with sugar later. Now how about the bagel and cream cheese? This has about half the calories of the mocha and muffin. It actually has a fair amount of fat and saturated fat, but it also has a little bit of fiber, so there is some redeeming quality here. But look how much sugar it has. Six grams of sugar. Double the amount of the sugar in the Egg McMuffin, which is has fewer calories, surprisingly, than the bagel and cream cheese. It has uh, 20 grams of fat, certainly a little bit more total fat than the bagel and cream cheese, but not too far below the amount of saturated fat. The cereal with fruit and donut actually have about the same amount of calories, surprisingly, with the donut having much more fat and the cereal and fruit having more sugar. Certainly some of that sugar is coming from the fruit, and we'll learn the difference between naturally occurring sugar and added sugar and its importance in the carbohydrate chapter. I'm going to go through a few experts or uh, leading nutrition researchers or former, depending on a few of these are retired, and I want to go through the differences uh, that they have in what they're recommending that we should eat, just to show you that nutrition is controversial, not everybody agrees what we should be eating, and although we'll be focusing on the USDA um, My Plate, um, which is the old food, uh, similar to the old food pyramid, and the USDA recommendations in this class, I will always be referring to some of these experts to show you how you can modify these recommendations to fit your diet, because every diet is unique. Now this is Dr. Lauren Cordain. He's a PhD. He is a retired researcher at Colorado State University and one of the leading experts on evolutionary diets. He is one of the originators of popularizing the paleo diet. He believes that we should eat like our ancestors. That means eating meat and fish and vegetables, avoiding grains, sugar, dairy, and even legumes. This is Dr. Neil Bernard, and he is the founder of the Physicians Committee for Responsible Medicine. He's been involved in a number of research projects, and he advocates for a whole food plant-based diet. So he's going to be the most opposite of Dr. Cordain. Whole foods, plant foods, grains, legumes, avoid meat, fish, and dairy. Now this is Dr. William Davis. He's a cardiologist. He's not a researcher. He's an author of Wheat Belly. Uh, he believes that chronic disease is caused from our modern version of wheat. So he would have you eat fruit, vegetables, and meat um, and avoid all wheat. So that is bread, it's cereals, crackers, pasta, etc. This is Dr. T. Colin Campbell, PhD, 
uh, retired nutritional biochemist, most well known for his research in the China study and his book of the same name. He's a firm believer that animal protein causes chronic disease. He would advocate a similar diet to Neil Bernard, whole foods, plant foods, grains and legumes, avoiding meat, fish, and dairy. He advocates avoiding eating anything with a face or a mother. Might be a little bit of a morbid way to think about it, but that's a general recommendation for a whole foods plant-based diet. This is Dr. Robert Lustig. He's a um, expert, uh, one of the leading experts in pediatric neuroendocrinology at UCSF. He is most well known for his movie that is a video on YouTube that went viral and is called Sugar the Bitter Truth. He thinks that sugar, in particular fructose, and we'll get into the difference between fructose and sucrose and glucose, um, that sugar is the cause of chronic disease. So this is the main cause. He advocates for eating real food, that means not processed, and limits or avoid sugar. Now this is added sugar in any form, obviously from soda, but also fruit juice. Now this is Dr. Caldwell Esselstyn. He is the author of Prevent and Reverse Heart Disease. He did a study that was over 12 years and he took patients who were near the end of their life, they had severe heart disease, they needed either more surgery or they were basically given a death sentence and he reversed their heart disease with a diet. It's fascinating. Uh, now he did this with a low fat or virtually non-fat diet. So he's going to advocate for whole grains, legumes, fruits and vegetables, but eliminate all fat. So that's plant fat, animal fat, all animal foods essentially. And lastly, this is Dr. David Perlmutter. He's a neurologist and author of Grain Brain. He recommends avoid eating grains and recommends eating fat and cholesterol. Seems almost opposite of Dr. Um, Esselstyn. So consume, he would tell you to eat fruits, vegetables, and meats and avoid grains. So like Dr. William Davis, avoiding in particular wheat, but also sugar. So, you know, this is not an all-inclusive list. I am choosing just a few people who are more prominent, vocal, uh, and popular, and to look at the differences between our more vegan diet and the paleo diet, because those two diets are particularly popular right now. Now, you can see some similarities. We look at Esselstyn, Bernard, T. Cole, and Campbell, all saying, you know, essentially to eat a whole foods, plant-based diet. There are some similarities here. And if we look at uh, Dr. Lauren Cordain, Dr. Davis, and Perlmutter, it's kind of the opposite. We're looking at saturated fat is actually healthy, uh, cholesterol is actually healthy, whole wheat bread is not healthy. And then, of course, Dr. Lustig, it's not really the grains or the fat, it's all about the sugar. But what's this common theme here? Uh, they, even though they seem really different, there's a very common theme, and it's the theme I'm going to come back to over and over and over again in this class. We're going to break down nutrition, and it's going to get really complicated, but there are some basic themes that you can stick to, whether you're eating paleo, vegan, or you're following the USDA uh, recommendations. Avoiding or minimizing sugar, added sugar in particular. Avoiding or minimizing processed foods, and we'll define what a processed food is. Eating an abundance of vegetables. No matter what type of diet you're following, you can follow these three basic concepts. 